This is the Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening. On Tuesday, the State of the Union address was uh, broadcast and it was the lowest turnout as far as audience on the uh, on television, and cable and satellite. Lowest turnout. People did not watch or were not interested in hearing what Joe Biden had to say, the president of the United States. And uh, throughout the, uh, the broadcast of the State of the Union, uh, many lies that Joe Biden has pointed out uh, was definitely and resoundly rejected by the Republicans uh, in the State of the Union address. Uh, but Sarah Huckabee Sand- Sanders, uh, the governor of Arkansas, who has been in office just for a few weeks, put the contrast out. And it was a contrast that really got a lot of people angry, especially those who are Democrats. And the contrast was the difference between normal and crazy. And that really got a lot of people upset about that. And that's what we see in this country. There is a difference between normal and crazy. Even individuals that are not in the body of Christ know the difference between what is normal and crazy. And so we have to applaud uh, Governor uh, Sanders for uh, her courage to uh, put the contrast out as far as the difference between what is normal and crazy. What's normal is husband and wife. What's crazy is two men trying to be husband and, and wife. What's normal is husband and wife. What's crazy is a wife calling another woman her husband or wife, and that's crazy. What's crazy is transgender. In other words, trying to be something in the flesh that you know biologically is impossible. That's crazy. What's normal is when a person has committed a crime. They get locked up. What's crazy is that they get arrested by the police and rightfully so, but the judge lets them out. That's crazy. And so we see a big difference in terms of what's normal and what's crazy. And you don't have to look far to see these things. Now, there is a there is a Bible scripture that depicts what's the difference between what's normal and crazy. Beginning in first John chapter four, beginning at verse one. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. And this is talking about false prophets, because John continues and says, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God, does not hear us. By this we know, and here's the contrast, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And that's what's at the foundation of what's the difference between normal and crazy. The spirit of truth is normal. The spirit of error is crazy. Now, let me back up and explain the text. At the beginning, you will see that a uh, Uh, John put out a test to see who is of God and who isn't of God. And this test applied to those who were of the Gnostics that came and said that Jesus really didn't come in the flesh. Well, here we have John, the apostle of the lamb, who was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus, who was there at the time that Jesus ministered in, in person. He was God manifested in the flesh is God manifested in the flesh. And, and that's what we see in the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. But these individuals decided to say Jesus did not come in the flesh. And how can you tell an individual that walked with Jesus, and this is what you'll see in the beginning of First John, 
uh, chapter one, he, he John handled Jesus. John touched Jesus. So how can they say that Jesus didn't come in the flesh when you have an eyewitness and many eyewitnesses of the ministry of Jesus at the time that he ministered? And, and so John put them to the test. You see, these individuals are false prophets, he says. And this is how you'll know. You have, first, have to first test the spirits. And this is the test that he applied back then, almost 2,000 years ago. In verse 2 of First John chapter 4, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, this is not talking about demonic spirits, although it may, in a sense, but this is talking about individuals that are possessed or used by demonic spirits. So every false prophet is being guided by a false spirit, a demonic spirit. Hence where you get the, the, the word where it tells us that it is seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. And so here, these false prophets are trying to say that Jesus never came in the flesh. Well, put the test to them, to these false prophets, that, that it asked them a question. Did Jesus come in the flesh or didn't he? And if they, and if they say that he did, then those individuals are, 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 can be trusted. But if they said that, th that Jesus Christ never came in the flesh, they cannot be trusted. So then if you continue into verse 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, in the book of 1 John chapter 2, we see that there are Antichrist spirits, spirits that are Antichrist that are already here in the world. And they're, they're here for a reason, and that is to deceive many so that way they can uh, no longer put their trust and faith in God. And so that's the whole purpose of false prophets and false teachers, and that is to deceive many. And that's the spirit of Antichrist that is in the world. And so we have to look out for these because every now and then the Antichrist spirits do come up. And when they do arrive, next thing you know, they're going to deceive many people. So here in 1 John chapter 2, beginning at verse 18, little children, it is the last hour. Now, John said this almost 2,000 years ago. So today it is even more uh, uh, clear that this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Now, the Antichrist, of course, is the, the beast and the false prophet that is spoken of in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12 and chapter 13. And also in uh, 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. And so this Antichrist and also Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. So this Antichrist is coming, but the spirit of the Antichrist is already here in the earth at work. Uh, again, the, the word Antichrist means that he is an opponent against Christ or an adversary against Christ. And this is the spirit that you have in the world. And, and so when you see the difference or the contrast between what's normal and what's crazy, we know that what is normal is what is truth. And what is crazy is that which is the spirit of error, which is driven by the spirit of the Antichrist. Paul also mentioned this in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, that where he said that, that uh, according to the course of this world, the spirit that now works in the children or sons of of disobedience or the ones that are the children of wrath. And so this spirit of Antichrist is already working in the earth and there is the contrast. We know the difference now, the difference between what's normal and what's crazy. I already alluded to you at the beginning of this, what is normal and what's crazy. Men having sex with men is not normal. It is crazy. What they're trying to do is normalize that the proof that it isn't normal is what they receive in themselves. In fact, in fact, the book of Romans chapter one tells us that they receive in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due now within a normal heterosexual marriage. And it's not just heterosexuality that we're trying to push. But holiness is what we're trying to to teach. But as far as heterosexuals are concerned, there is no STDs that are given to individuals that marry uh, normally as far as husband and wife, a biological male and a biological female. 
one biological male and one biological female for the rest of their lives. But when a man hooks up with a man and, and have sex with a man, the Bible tells us in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 that it is an abomination before God. And so this is not normal. Ha men having sex with boys is not normal. It is pedophilia. And so we have to side in with what the Bible tells us what's normal and not side in with what is crazy. So now this spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, continuing in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. You have already heard that the, spirit, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But when, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So what they're trying to do is trying to get the church to come into their circle and normalize the, the thing that God calls an abomination. The thing that is crazy. What's normal is what God has established in his word. Remember what it says in the book of John, uh, Genesis uh, chapter two, that he made them male and female. And, and so that's what's normal, male and female. What's crazy is male and male and female and female. What's also crazy is when man and woman get together and fornicate and produce a child and then they kill their child. That is not normal. That is crazy. So it's not just the abortion that is a sin and an, and an abomination before God, but the act of fornication, having sex outside of marriage, and then deciding that you're going to kill your child, that in and of itself is crazy. And so that's what we have to do. We have to decide what is normal and what is crazy. And by doing this, we open up the scriptures and thereby use the measurement of the scriptures to determine what is normal and what is crazy. Sin is crazy. Righteousness is normal. And that's the very thing that the world does not want us to deal with. The world wants us to be crazy just as they are. And so that's the spirit of truth and that's the spirit of error. The difference between what is normal and what is crazy. You've been listening to this Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening.